Hey, YouTubers. I wanted to uh, talk specifically to beginners. Um, like myself, I was one at one point, and some things to look out for, especially what uh, we're going to get into today, is the uh, nitrogen cycle. I'm not going to break it down to an exact science, but more or less just talk about the length that it takes, because when we start, nobody tells us that you're going to need to be testing your water and checking it. And some of those employees at the larger chain stores like PetSmart and PetsCo, uh, they are not experts. Um, they are trained to tell you that your tank will be cycled in a week. Some will tell you two weeks. But the ones that have had to learn the hard way, like myself, hobbyists, that it actually takes much longer than that. Uh, it can take a month if you have plants in there. It can take six to eight weeks if you're using decorative plastic stuff, whatever you like to use. I prefer plants. It looks more natural. And it does kickstart the uh, cycling process. And it helps maintain your take and keep it clean. Anyway, so uh, essentially what we're talking about here is ammonia being uh, transferred into food that feeds your plants that then gets converted into nitrites and then there's a bacterial stage between that and then there's a bacterial stage between the nitrites to nitrates which is what you're waiting on. Now if you're impatient and you're dropping your fish in there right away and you happen to buy test strips or testers to test your water the first few days it's all gonna look like the water the pH is gonna look perfect everything's gonna look perfect and that's because you haven't started anything yet your parameters are going to look good, you know, and everything's going to seem okay. And then your fish start pooping, and then it starts the whole nitrogen cycle. Now, if you've made mistakes like myself, or if you're about to buy a tank, uh, which, by the way, never buy a tank smaller than five gallons. They, it, they, they, anything smaller than that isn't good for anything. It's not good for plants. It's not good for any fish. Even though some of them will tell you betas can do just fine in tap water and in a one-gallon tank, they are trying to get the fish out the door and get you whatever you can afford in your pocket. And if all you've got is 50 bucks on you, then yeah, you can buy a one gallon tank. You can buy a bag of pebbles and you can buy one fish and one thing of food and put your beta in tap water and watch it slowly die um, over a, a couple months. Sometimes they'll live even longer. But anyway, um, you need a five gallon tank with some kind of filtration system. It can be a sponge filters, which are submerged, or a hang-on-the-back filter, which I do prefer. I've explained this in videos before and why. Um, both of them will grow the beneficial bacteria that you're looking for. Just take some time. Uh, if you use a hang-on-the-back filter, do not use the carbon filters they come with. Toss those. Just buy yourself a roll of fiber media or a sponge, a new one, and put that in place of it. Sponge filters that are submerged are what are they? They're a, they're a sponge. So you put a sponge in there and it will collect large things, small things, but it'll also grow the bacteria. Now, there are some things that if you decide that you're not going to start buying all these expensive testing kits, um, which can be shocking how expensive they can be, there are things that you can look for, you know, with your own eyes after a month, you know, to see if the water is essentially safe. Um, you'll start to see um, algae growing um, uh, on the glass or, or on other things, you know, and some will tell you that means that it's, it's uh, started to do its, its thing, um, uh, which can be true. Um, if you're impatient, I strongly suggest getting plants and putting those in there because it makes it go much quicker. Um, you know, if you make the mistake like I did and you're just putting fish in there, you know, within the first few days, the only way you're going to be able to get them to survive or not suffer through this whole cycling process is to be doing water changes constantly. Now, uh, most stores are going to start you off. If you get a starter kit, it comes with a hang on the back filter. That's fine. Do not use the carbon filters. Carbon goes bad after 30 days and you have to replace the filter with new ones. Um, and when that happens, you throw it away, you put in a new carbon filter that's surrounded by a sponge, and you've thrown away all the bacteria you've grown, ergo starting the nitrogen cycle again, and putting your fish through that whole process again that may or may not survive. Some are hardy and okay, and they'll survive. 
but they are fish. They can't tell you that their gills are burning because there's too many nitrites in there or there's too much ammonia. You know, that's up to you to be able to see the signs through watching your fish every day. And after looking at your fish, you can see these things. You know, if they're in pain or hurting or suffering, they'll show you through their activity. They'll either be none, like they're just hanging out in a corner or hiding behind something and not moving. They don't get excited when you feed them. Uh, they'll flare their gills out, and that's because their gills are burning from all of the um, uh, things that are happening in the tank, That um, the process that's happening. Um, you know, So it's up to you to get rid of those things if you cannot wait for the process to finish. And through doing that, you need to do water changes. Uh, carbon in those filters... Uh, the filter cartridges, um, really all that's good for is just eliminating the smell um, in your tank. And if your tank stinks, you've got a bigger problem than it's stinking. And that problem is, is you're lazy. You know, if you're walking by your tank and it stinks like fish and crud and other things, you haven't been keeping up with your water changes. You know, if you swap the water out every couple days, it shouldn't smell like anything. So... Therefore, carbon is just useless and it goes bad after a month anyway. And you have to keep buying more carbon filters and, you know, and restarting the whole nitrogen process all over again. You know, bacteria will grow on the uh, stuff in your tank, the rocks, plants, the substrate, whatever that may be. You know, it doesn't hang out in the water column. So that's why you, it's safe to go ahead and change your water every single day. Um, and there are bacterial starters that you can buy that will help it, the process move along quicker where you put live bacteria in there. It still takes time though for it to stick. Um, what I have learned, if you are impatient and you know, you feel like you want something in there the day you get it, at least put some plants in there to get it going quicker. Wait a couple more days, pick out one fish, put that one fish in there. And every day or every other day, do a water change. And, you know, keep up with that for at least a month. After your, after the month is up, you can add another fish. Don't overcrowd. You start overcrowding, you're going to have to do more water changes because unless you have a copious amounts of plants to keep up with all that waste, it's all going to end up in your water and the ammonia levels are going to go up and that can kill your fish too. So you don't want the ammonia, you don't want the nitrates. You want the nitrates. But we're not talking about that process, how to get there. We're talking about people like me who didn't even bother to uh, test for these things and how to naturally know that it's already happened and how long it takes, which is typically a month uh, with plants in. And you can cut it down a couple of weeks with those starters, but a month. But you can put plants in right away. You know, just give it some time before you throw the fish in there. And fish can help cycle it faster just don't put a bunch of fish in there. You're going to have a bunch of dead fish. If, if you refuse to wait and you're impatient, put one fish in there after 48 hours and swap the water out every day for a month until you start to see that your filter, your sponge filter or your hang on the back filter has started to build up all of these dark substances on it. You know, I'm not talking about the thick stuff that you need to remove. Um, you know, I'm talking about the, the little stuff. It's discolored. Um, you know, so uh, if you have it hang on the back filter um, and you replace that filter with a sponge, you don't ever have to replace it again, but you do need to clean it once a month. Clean it in the tank water that you've siphoned out of the tank, put it in there, squeeze it a few times, and then put it back in there and you're good to go and you shouldn't ever, ever have to mess with it. If you run it under tap water, you will kill all the beneficial bacteria uh, from the chlorine and the chloramine that's inside your tap water and that will start the process all over again. So be sure that you stick with the sponge filter that you have put in your HOB and rinse it off in tank water or treated water. You know, you dechlorinated some water and rinse it off in there. And don't use hot water either. You know, use room temperature water. Not too hot, not too cold. You know, you're just getting the clumpy stuff off of there. Uh, to wrap it up, you know, this is basically just my advice for people who are just diving in and buying just the essentials and how to do this without having done your due diligence first. You know, you know, I'm, I'm giving you a time frame as to 
how long you should wait before you start dumping stuff in there too early. And if you do, what you can do to prevent them, you know, from dying if you decide to start it too early. Um, it is a sad thing when fish die. You might not care because fish, you know, they're typically inexpensive and you're like, oh, it's $3, it died. Well, on a subconscious level, you've made an agreement with a fish when you bought it or any pet in general. And this agreement is, is that you have told it uh, that you would be responsible for its life and give it a proper habitat where it can thrive and be happy. You know, this is a, a, a subconscious agreement that you've uh, taken responsibility for. So think about that, you know, um, a, a life is a life, you know, because it, you spent $2 on a guppy doesn't mean that its life is any less worthless than anything else that's alive, you know, so do your research, do your due diligence. And if you're like me and like the majority of people who just start, you don't learn these things right off the bat. You start learning it through trial and error and things dying on you and preventative things you can do to stop them from dying. If you're impatient like me and you start putting things in there early, the only way you're going to be able to control it safely without buying all this extra stuff and testing it constantly all the time is you need to know it takes at least a month with plants for beneficial bacteria to grow and stick and be established in your tank. If you're using um, all plastic fake stuff, it can take six to eight weeks before it sticks. So if you're going to start dumping live animals in there, do a water change every day and that is going to pull out any excess ammonia and night trites out of your tank you know obviously treat the water first with conditioners um, at the very minimum someone at whatever those big stores should have told you that you're gonna need dechlorinator for the tap water no fish can survive in tap water some will some may and may for months may for a day and die instantly some get away with it for a long time but guess what what's happening is that entire time they are suffering and they are hurting, they're in pain, and they can't tell you this. You need to know these things. So, you know, uh, start off with small tanks. Don't dive into the hobby with a giant tank and a bunch of fish. I started off with two five-gallon tanks with one fish and plants. Then I up to a 10-gallon. Um, and, you know, once I established everything and after years gone by and I, and I knew I had that perfect, I'm then going to start on a 40-gallon tank and... Uh, do everything that I've learned from my experiences before. Um, I, I do now test my water and all of those things, but I'm talking from someone who started off without doing those things. You know, the majority of us aren't, you know. So keep that in mind. If you're not going to go the whole nine yards and start with the bare minimum, have a bit of patience or, um, you know, you need to do your due diligence and change the water constantly. If you don't know what's going on in there on a microscopic level, change the water every day, do it for a month, and then you'll know you're you're good to go. And your fish will tell you also. You know, so look at your fish. They're swimming around, they get excited when you're feeding them and all of that. You've done some you're doing something right and keep up with it. And and even when the bacteria has grown, that doesn't mean you can just slack off and not do anything. You can just cut back on the water changes and do it, you know, once a week, um, you know, or even longer, depending. It just depends on how many fish you have, you know. So it never hurts to water change all the time. You want to do one 20%, 30% every single day or once a, once a week, change out all the water, fine. The bacteria doesn't live in the water column. It lives on the objects. You're waiting for it to grow and attach itself to your filter and to everything that's in the tank. So the water itself means nothing, you know, besides the fact that you need to treat it and dechlor, you know, dechlorinize it first. Um, and then after that, you know, just do your due diligence. You know, if you're impatient, you get it going. A preventative measure, change your water every single day. Wait at, wait at least two days a week before you drop a fish in there. And if you're, and even then, Change the water every day and get that stuff out of there until beneficial bacteria started to grow. And a good sign is algae and a good sign that things are going okay with your fish is if they're moving around, doing stuff. You know, a, a sick fish will sit and do nothing. 
It will hide. It'll hang in the back. Um, it will hover in one spot and never, you know, move spots essentially. Um, when you first get a fish, this is common. They're stressed out because you transferred them. But after two days, if you still see it sitting there not doing anything, you've got a problem with your water. Start swatch, swapping the water out over and over and over, you know, and giving it clean water until that bacteria has started doing its thing. Um, so, you know, be mindful. Think about these things. If you're impatient and lazy, these are th steps that you can take before you've, you know, bought everything that you need for an aquarium. You're starting off with the you know bare essentials. You couldn't wait. So keep all this in mind. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, if I left something out, you know, let me know. And uh, I will answer the questions to the best of my ability. Um, thank you.